hey, I can't find any Galaxy XR PC VR videos even looking with a flashlight. Why nobody's playing at those 90 Hz with that awesome new Wi-Fi 7 streaming? Well, let me show you the dumpster fire that is PC VR on the Samsung Galaxy XR headset. So here it is, RTX 5090. And even that does not run the game stable without all stutters and high latency. Even with the refresh limit set to 72 Hz, it's still not enough to make games playable on the Galaxy XR. The dude cannot even hit a tennis ball because of all the latency on the Your Gaming Techie channel. Just jumped to 75 milliseconds just for doing that. And it's jumping up again, now went to 80 milliseconds. I can't hit this. There's no way that I can play this game. It's and he talks about even worse latency in other games. On the Galaxy SR device, and even when I'm turning my head, it is going crazy. It's uh, stuttering at 153 milliseconds right now, and it just went all the way back down to 72 milliseconds, and it's kind of sitting there, and every time I move my head left and right, it is spiking, going 190 milliseconds. Marty Dude VR complaining about the latency again. That 8K resolution, there's a lot more latency, a lot, a way more latency than it would be normally on, you know, another headset that has Stanley 2.0. But there is even a bigger issue. Do you notice all the screen jittering? So not only there are stutters, but your screen and hands shake like crazy. Which obviously will make you dizzy in VR. And shaky controller tracking will ruin any shooters, even if the latency is fixed. Here I'm playing on the Play for Dream headset. It had the virtual desktop maybe close to a year now. And you can see even it runs better. Still, the latency isn't great for anything more than a casual game. If I set the screen resolution to monster, and even put all recommended virtual desktop limits to make it run better, it still does not run stable on these high resolutions. The latency was always bad, it's just that these new 4K headsets running even higher resolutions expose how bad wireless virtual desktop streaming really is for the PC VR. This is why I'm always using the new Steam Link 2.0 now, since it has came out a month ago. And I have recently turned on the virtual desktop again to shoot a video about my new Virpil Cadet flight stick. And I had so many issues. High latency drop frames, all bugs and issues in the Microsoft Flight 2024 game. It's a true modern audience game experience with all the screen distortions and jitters. I have never had these issues playing on the new Steam Link 2.0. Look, even the same Microsoft Flight Simulator still runs terrible at only 40 FPS, but Steam Link does the reprojection to 80 FPS with no distortions, no jittering, no smearing the image. It just works. I have made two videos showing how awesome the new Steam Link is in many games, but there is no Steam Link on the Galaxy XR. And I have heard the Valve developers are not even working to get the Steam Link on the Android XR. We do not care about this platform or issues it has right now. And it makes sense because Valve has made the Steam Link 2.0 a universal app, which means Play for Dream developers have to update their OS to add a compatibility for the Steam Link. And to make the eye tracking work and we are working to on the next OS update to add the controller models and the rest of the features. So Steam Link on the Galaxy XR depends not on the Valve developers, but Google and Samsung adding the Steam Link integration. And that is very unlikely. If they haven't mentioned PC VR gaming even once in the whole one hour Android XR launch event. Well, the whole PC gaming one minute bit showed the flat screen mobile level game with the only feature and purpose to promote the Gemini AI again. How the AI can teach you how to play the game.
Samsung does not even bother to sell the controllers with headset. And this is by design. We do not think PC VR gaming is important for Android XR. Maybe they do not even want you to buy and play games on the Steam. Because you should be buying mobile Android games from the Google Store and paying subscriptions for all the movies and sports streaming. That was the whole presentation dedicated to push the AI and subscription services. So even if everyone has bought the Galaxy XR for PC VR games, we are learning the hard way this headset is all about AI bullshit. And it is the worst headset for PC VR. Even with a virtual desktop it is terrible. And there will be no easy fixes. Only Steam Link, to, only Steam Link 2.0 could save it. But nobody is working to get the Steam Link working on the Android XR right now. Which simply means if you want a wireless 4K micro OLED headset for gaming, Play for Dream is the only option right now. It has the Steam Link 2.0 beta already working and will continue updating the headset to add more features. You sure you want to go out? The troll in sector 10 is spilling over. There are sniper bots and patrol ships everywhere. They're targeting everyone suspicious and your rig does look weird. What wing of the underground are you? Oh Second Galaxy XR is all about 2D windows and AI bullshit. So Samsung has traded all 3D stereo overlap for the widest field of view, which works great for viewing flat windows around you. But it's not suitable for VR gaming, because your VR games will look flat and fake. This is the main hardware flaw for VR, which cannot be fixed with any updates. And the main deal breaker why I would not even consider buying this headset for gaming. All issues do not end though. Running Android XR means your headset is full of spyware from Google, which will always run in the background, again like that AI recording your screen listening in the background, you cannot turn those features off. Which means even worse performance and high latency for games, that already run so poor in the virtual desktop. Lastly, Play for Dream cares about gaming, so we have added actual useful features for gamers, like an ability to change screen resolutions, ability to change screen color profiles, and with a Samsung you are stuck on a single annoying oversaturated yellow color profile. Play for Dream is working on a new feature which will allow to change your screen field of visions and pixel density. Imagine being able to reduce the field of view, wanting a better performance and higher pixel density in a flight sim or having an ability to select the widest FOV for the best dimension for VR games. You will be able to switch between different FOVs and pixel densities in the next Play for Dream OS update, while Google will be adding more useless AI slop, AI helpers to teach you how to play mobile games. We are not even hiding that the Galaxy SR is all about the AI slop and subscriptions. There is no PC VR to be found anywhere. By the way, all big Galaxy SR quotes reviews were sponsored by Samsung and did not even disclose that. 80 million views bought by Samsung with only 300 comments before those were turned off trying to hide this. So this is my short take trying to show why nobody is making any videos about the PC VR on the Galaxy XR headset. Because the headset is simply not for PC VR gaming. And Samsung marketing does not even want to advertise the headset of being capable to play games on Steam. So I do not believe or expect for any software updates or any fixes anytime soon that is simply not in the interest of the Samsung or Google trying to push own services. And maybe soon we will be judging gaming headsets by how well we support run the Steam Link. Because essentially this is exactly what you want for the PC VR, a headset with a single click Steam support that just works. A good field of vision 
with a good 3D stereo overlap and some decent controllers. But leave your comments below. What do you think about the Galaxy XR launch and the future of the wireless PC VR? And if you are curious which game I'm playing, this is G-String in VR with a full body tracking support. I'm using Panda trackers as always. And check the Panda Discord if you want to get the tracker set for yourself.